Absolutely. All right, good morning, everyone. I would like to remind everyone to please make sure that all cell phones are turned to the off or vibrate position. Also, please be advised our city council meetings are broadcast on television, on Comcast Channel 99, and rebroadcast on WMGJ Radio. This meeting of the Gaza City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Tolls. Here. Councilman Williams. Here. Worthy. Here. Eccles. Here. Billingsley. Here. Councilman Cannon is absent today. Councilman Reed. Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Shane Ellison to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful for this day of sunshine that you've given us. We're thankful again for the opportunity to serve you, to serve our state, county, and city, and for the, uh, the job fair that's in our community today. Pray that uh, some of our citizens are blessed through those efforts. And just give thanks for all those in attendance today and for their willingness to serve. Pray that you always be them, with them and help them to make wise decisions for our community. Pray for the council and the mayor as we go throughout the, the meeting and the week. And just give thanks for all that you've blessed our city with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. All right. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and city council meeting held on June 20th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of accounts for the week of June 16th through the 22nd. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries mm -hmm. to ratify payment of the accounts. All right, proclamations, Mayor. Yeah. <coughs> Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Is anybody here with that group? Come up, please. Whereas uh, Gadsden's elderly and senior adults are valued members of society, the number of aged citizens is growing and the instance of abuse, neglect, and exploitation of those adults is outpacing the growth of the population. Such elder abuse is a significant and complex social and health problem that impacts all cultural, social, economic, and demographic groups. Combating the mistreatment of elderly and senior adults will help improve their quality of life and will allow them to continue to live as independently as possible and contribute to the life and vibrancy of Gadsden. Gadsden's elderly and senior adults have a right to live free of abuse, neglect, exploitation and to be treated with respect and dignity to enable them to be valued members of this community. The City of Gaston, the Council on Aging of Etowah County, the Adult Service Program, Etowah County Department of Human Resources, and many other social service agencies are committed to working closely with community partners to protect and provide the needs for our aged citizens. The City of Gaston, the Council on Aging of Etowah County are committed to serving the aged population by supporting programs and services the community needs, including public education. The protection of our elderly and senior adults is in the interest of all and further adds to the well-being of our city. Therefore, I, Sherman Guyton, Mayor of the City of Gaston, do hereby proclaim Elder Abuse Awareness Day and encourage all citizens to raise awareness of elder abuse, neglect, and exploitation.
Good afternoon. Good morning. I should say good afternoon. <laughs> this is I'm Jennifer Grace from the Council on Aging, and um, we are having our Elder Abuse Summit tomorrow. Um, we've been doing it for 12 years to educate our uh, community on elder abuse. Unfortunately, it's growing. Um, uh, I don't know if it's the abuse that's growing or just that they're more aware and they feel more comfortable about reporting. And that's really what we want to do is educate them so that they feel comfortable to report so that they don't have to go through such a tragic thing. Um, I had asked DHR the other day for some numbers which they're going to report um, so I could maybe do a candlelight vigil. Um, but then when I found out how many actually in our county I wasn't sure if I could afford it, but what I'm trying to say is there's that many people in our community. Um, the senior citizens, um, baby boomers are growing every day. Um, one out of 10 um, seniors report abuse, and unfortunately one out of 24, um, or I mean there's 24 that don't report. Um, so we're hoping the numbers are only growing because they're more educated and feel more comfortable about coming forward, not that the abuse is actually increasing. Um, but I thank you for having us here today, and I'm honored to be here. Um, and we invite you to come join us to fight this battle in our community. So tomorrow at the Senior Activity Center from 10 to 1, we will have wonderful speakers and free lunch. Can't pass up a free lunch. And we'll have snacks also. And we'll continue to fight this battle with our community. Lynn Carnes, the APS supervisor, was not here to, was not able to be here today. The number she gave me for the fiscal year, which is not over, is 273. And she said if it continues to be as busy as it has been, they'll exceed the numbers in previous years. Councilman Williams has asked me to be brief, so I've had to jot a few notes down. <laughs> so, uh, we want to talk a little bit about economic. I'm Frankie Davis, with economic development for the city of Gaston. We want to talk a little bit about economic development and workforce development. And if time allows it, I'd like for the members of our Industrial Development Authority to introduce themselves later. But for now, if they would just stand up, please. As you can tell, we've got a lot of uh, generals, I think, in the crowd. But anyway, it's a great thing for them to come together and work as a group for economic development. And the council, the reason we ask you today is a couple to, to be here. There's a couple of things going on. And one, you got the job fair today, and we thought it would be appropriate to discuss uh, what the IDA is doing at this point in time. And they have uh, done some restructuring over the last few months and additions uh, to, the, to the board that we think better reflects of the needs of today. And I want to give a special thanks to Greg Gregerson, who's been president during this time of transition. A lot of these members have been with IDA for years. Some are new. And uh, the mayor, well, you may have to use the gavel on him. <laughs> He'll be longer. But the mayor will explain some of the reorganization, and, and, uh, and I'll, I'll just read a few brief comments that we had and hope that it explains a little bit of what we're trying to do. A recent letter to the editor in the Gaston Times has questioned the value of economic development as it relates to this community's sustainability and growth. Maybe we have not explained enough the value of business, government, and education working together for continued economic development for Gadsden and Etowah County. 
I think that this is a good time to update the Gaston City Council and community on the investment in, an, in the Industrial Development Authority and their additions and restructuring of the IDA to better reflect Gadsden and Etowah County area's current needs that will give the greatest potential for growth in a competitive, ever-changing business climate. You know, there's a lot of good things going on in Gadsden. Sunday, my wife and I, and she happens to be here today, so if I say anything wrong, I'll know about that <laughs> one. We walked uh, the trail at the falls, and it was crowded with people on the trail at the falls. As we came back by Coosa Landing, it was covered up with people. Um, restaurants were busy. There was a lot going on in Gadsden, and it's not like that every day, but most of the time there is. You, um, and I need to recognize Heather for the works that she's done with Councilman Worthy on the job fair. They put a lot of effort into that. Uh, there's an old saying that business goes where it is wanted and stays where treated well. As you know, business must make a profit. By government investing in quality of life issues, infrastructure, site location, site prep, and a trained workforce while working with the educators and business community, this gives us the best chance to create better paying jobs. With increased pay, more commerce is created. It takes a better trained workforce to compete in today's economy. And as we invest in traditional education, as well as career tech, we will deliver a better and higher educated workforce that will strengthen the area's economy. As you can see by the membership of the IDA board that includes local government, education, and the business community, we are committed to working together by using all of our financial as well as our human assets to create growth in economic development for this community. In closing, I want to leave you with one other statement. A rising tide lifts all boats. And really, we are all in the same boat of life and community together. Now, I wasn't talking about the tide in Tuscaloosa for Mr. McCarthy to say. <laughs> You know, we might get a couple of these mayors and Councilman Eccles going, but we've got to have respect for our Auburn folks in the crowd <laughs> today. But again, I want to thank all the past and current members of the IDA for their selfless work to make this area a better place in which to live, and especially Mayor Guyton and the City of Council for their continued support of economic development for Gadsden and Nettawalk County. Thank you. On behalf of the board of the IDA, I'd just like to thank the council very much for your help in, in our reorganization, the mayor's office, Frankie, for all he's done to help us through our transition and, and make it a better organization. And we are going to get some great things done in this community. Thank you. <clears throat> Excluding the ladies, when I first looked out, I thought the local pool hall had burned. <laughs> uh, we appreciate everybody being here today, and uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the uh, Workforce Development and Economic Development IDA, and I want to thank Frankie for all the work he does on that. When he uh, helped talk me into running for mayor, I helped talk him into coming with me. Uh, but he had a lot of experience in Tuscaloosa when Folsom was governor, and uh, he, he's proven a great asset to everything that we do up here. <clears throat> Since 2006, the city of Gadsden has been working for ways to improve Gadsden and Etowah County's economy. During this process, leaders have found a great body of research and strong recommendations from the University of Alabama Center for Business and Economic Research at the Culver House College of Commerce. In taking some of the recommendations from Workforce Report 10, I have asked the Industrial Development Authority to restructure to better reflect the growing needs of the community, employers, and our stakeholders. With businesses, education, and government working together, we can create a successful environment for a thriving city of Gadsden, Etowah County, and the state of Alabama. 
The IDA is here to promote industry and trade by helping to facilitate manufacturing, industrial, and commercial enterprises in our community. I want to thank the IDA for making changes to its bylaws to create new standing committees, especially relating to workforce development and retention. The reorganization of the IDA provides for six permanent positions based on the person's job that will make sure the IDA has education and government represented in the area of continuing workforce development and areas of site development and project completion. These six positions are the president of Gadsden State Community College, the director of Alabama Technology Network, director of the Gadsden Water Works, director of the Gadsden Airport Authority, the superintendent of Gadsden City Schools, and the superintendent of Etowah County Schools. The city of Gadsden continues to invest substantial financial and human resources <clears throat> in this board, and I encourage our educators to work together to create the best career technical programs in the state. Through cooperation and coordination of businesses, education and government can be a model for the state in workforce and economic development. Thanks again for the much needed restructuring to the IDA, and I'm sure by working together, we can all do great things for career tech education, which can create great paying jobs for our students and adults in Etowah County. I do have one other thing I want to read. As my Army Drill Sergeant said, he had an hour speech. He was going to give it to us in 30 minutes if we got it good. If we didn't, that was tough. Uh, I don't usually pay much attention to uh, things, you know, I don't look at Facebook, I don't really know how to get on it. People tell me, some of them in my office look at it sometime, or articles and editorials in the paper. But, uh, you know, we've been working really hard for about 11 years, and uh, sometimes it just hits a nerve. So I'm going to have a few things to say. There was a letter to the editor a couple weeks ago which insinuated that riverfront development and other projects that had to do with economic development were important, but the school was more important. Sort of insinuated the city was spending and working on those projects and neglecting the school system. And I have said many times, so goes our schools, so goes our city. So let me give you a few facts about Gadsden City Schools and the support we do. The city paid for, built, and equipped the Career Tech Building, the football stadium, the bond issue for the school, we pay half and they pay half. Lots of money for outside agency funding went to the school. The mayor and the council discretionary funds bought supplies, equipments, trips, contests for students, band instruments, the SROs for schools and crosswalks, soccer fields and track, two ball fields, one in East Gas and one for girls softball, funded career tech coaches to recruit for career tech, also concrete work, repairs, and anything they pretty much ask us to do, we've always tried to help. For instance, we have invested in the school board approximately $36 million in capital improvements. When I came into office, we owed $80 million, had a million and a half in the bank, and payments of seven and a half million a year. And so by in, in, put, in putting that much money in the schools, I'm glad we've been able to work it out and, and been able to do it. But uh, the council and I have worked with, all the councils I've worked with since I've been in office, have been the biggest supporters of the schools. If you ever want to know the real facts, come to my office, give me a call, I'll meet you anytime. So if you're on Facebook or writing editorial, get the true facts about C at City Hall so you'll know what you're talking about. So with the screw and riverfront development, there are approximately 400 to 600 jobs available in Etowah County. And there's a big job fair today that Frankie already mentioned. Uh, if you are 18 and over and you're not working, it's your fault or the parents' fault. So get a job and let's get a lot of good things going and quit all the rhetoric that's going on. Thanks. Well, thank you, ma'am. Greg, you been with the uh, IDA from its inception and he'll, he'll give you a little background and his thoughts on what that's been. Thank you, Greg. He's the director of the Alabama Technology Network. And thank you. I think they know me. Um, for 30 years now, 30 years, we have had a partnership at ATN uh, with the city of Gaston. Some of you have been around here most of those years. Uh, it has been a superb partnership, I think. Uh, I've tried to be respectful of, of your contribution to that. We've served about 100 to 200 companies a year and something like 2,000 employees 
involved in some kind of training. So I want to thank this council and the previous councils and the mayor uh, for that partnership. It's, it's been all good. I don't remember one time we had had any problems. Um, Frankie, the mayor asked me to come up here today because I was on the original study team at the University of Alabama that as this city was transitioning from a commission form of government to a mayor council, uh, it was a good time to take uh, stock, do an assessment, and try to figure out what was the best strategy for the future. Out of that study came the creation of the technology center that I'm still at and the IDA. Many other things came out of it, but um, I, I remember when Dr. Patera and some of the others in our group talk to the city leadership, <laughs> there were lots of issues, uh, obviously. This was the mid-80s, late-80s. But we thought there were two that were most critical, and they were critical. And the first was that we establish a modern economic development effort in the city, and that meant revitalizing the chamber a little bit, uh, and changing some things at the schools, uh, developing the IDA. So that was one of them. The other issue that was equal was that this community come together. Now, it was critical at that point in time. And the IDA did that, I think. And a lot of you would agree, maybe some don't. But it was a place we could all come and agree to disagree sometimes, but go forward uh, for the betterment of this community. And Frankie said all boats rise in a high tide, and, and certainly that is still true today. Um, I can't, I, I think we did a wonderful job in those early days, Bill, at the IDA and, and, and bringing this city back. In my opinion, we're at that same situation right now. We have two critical needs in my judgment and one of them is that we revitalize and modernize our economic development effort uh heather's doing a lot of things at the chamber uh and it, it's time we re revitalized ida and got going we need to be on par with the other cities that we compete against not only in alabama but in Georgia and Mississippi and Tennessee and, and, and all around the country, really, because that's who we're competing with today for industry. So we have got to do that. And I'm very grateful to Bill Green and uh, Greg Gregerson and others that have kept the doors open at the IDA and kept us going forward. But now it's time to really put an effort behind that. Or we're going to get left behind. Uh, we've got to get on par with the other communities. The second thing just like it was in the mid-80s. We've got to come together as a community. I think the IDA may be a place we can do that. We need the county council, the county commission, I saw Carolyn this morning, uh, involved. We need all three of the school systems very involved. And we have a wonderful new president at Gadsden State. We need the college involved. We need all the municipalities, Wally, um, involved. We need every citizen of Ellerwall County, and especially the business community, to say we are going to make our own personal agendas second to that of the good of this community. And we're going to come together and agree to disagree sometime and still be friends. Um, so, Mayor and Council, thank you for your leadership on redoing the IDA. I think it is a place that we can get excited about, we can come together, and we can move this community forward. It's high time. If we don't, we're gonna get left behind. But I think we are. I think we're going forward. So thank you very much for your leadership. And all of y'all, uh, let's, let's come together and do this thing. We can do it. Do you have time for each one of these members to just stand up and give their name? Sure. As you can tell, there's a lot of elected officials here, here and a lot of business people in there from the county. There's two county commissioners here, three mayors that I can tell of, and, and who knows what else. And, and I, I failed to mention Bill Green, who has been keeping the ship afloat for us and, and as a acting executive director. But would y'all mind, uh, uh, this is a, a, a area-wide effort that it takes to 
to create good jobs, and if they're created in, in Southside or Otala, Gaston Benefits, and vice versa, or in the county, and this is the effort that all these people have committed to, to and especially the superintendents, and Dr. Lavender's out of town, or she would be here today. She's chairman of the workforce committee. So if you have a moment, I wish all of you to stand up and just give your name and what you do. You don't have to tell the your whole resume. Now. Once again, we want to thank each of you in advance um, for your, your past service and continued service to this city. Greg, thank you for the wonderful comments um, and the historical perspective. It's, uh, it's definitely high time for us to leverage the girth of our region and this area in order to move this area and this city forward and this county forward from an economic development standpoint. Um, we're, we're in some difficult times right now. We have some, uh, some great opportunities to, uh, to, to right-size the ship relative to commercial development um, and, and relative to all elements, industrial development and all elements of our economic development machine. And so I think this is a step in the, in the right direction. Um, and, and I think uh, the foresight to assign or align the positions on the IDA with titles in the community as opposed to individuals is, uh, is, is very key in that it helps to preserve some of the continuity that comes along with needing to move us forward. Uh, it's, it's the one thing I worry about when you look at our form of government. You know, we've got an election coming up next year and, uh, it, and, and, and it could very easily be that, you know, you'd have seven new faces up here. Um, and that's fine, you know, that's a part of our uh, electoral process. But also with that comes the, uh, the, the loss of some level of business continuity. Uh, and so you lose, you really lose some history, you lose, I don't even like to think of what it would be like without having Mr. Eccles up here. Uh, because you, lo you honestly, you lose a lot of history. You lose a lot of uh, um, perspective. Uh, and you lose the ability to understand and know um, and, and you don't always know what you're going to get going forward either because there are no minimum requirements other than, uh, than citizenship and a few other things. There's no minimum requirements for this. So you, don't, you never know what you're going to get. So again, I, I, you know, not to get too far off the path, beaten path, I, beaten path I, I do want to thank those of you who have stepped up to be a part of this, uh, this movement on the part of the city because I think it's very important uh, that we move forward in a unified direction, and, uh, and, and I do appreciate it. And I, and I also want to highlight the fact that this is a very diverse group. It's a very diverse group. Uh, you know, when you start looking at all demographics, age, race, color, uh, this is a very diverse group. I think every demographic area within the city is represented within this group, and I do appreciate those of you who stepped up. Thanks to the mayor's office, and, and Frankie, we, we let you come out today, and we appreciate <laughs> We appreciate what you've done in terms of your hard work and efforts. I, I think a lot of times he gets overlooked in terms of a lot of the work that he does to, uh, to support this city. Mm -hmm. But he's very passionate, as you can tell, very passionate about the city and, and where we need to move forward. So, so again, we do appreciate that. Okay.
All right, we, we don't have any unfinished business today. So this is the time and place as advertised to conduct a public hearing, allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of an ordinance amending the zoning ordinance regarding first floor residential access. This would require multifamily residential units in commercial districts to have a common foyer. This would relieve privacy and safety concerns by avoiding ac access directly onto a sidewalk or public right-of-way. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this ordinance? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? This ordinance is presented today for first reading and the council will vote on it next week. Our next public hearing is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 902 Rogers Street in District 3. Zelamina O. Johnson being the last known owner. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Good morning. I'm, I'm Zelamina. Um, they tell me it's a nuisance, and I've talked to Mr. Harbison, I believe it was several weeks ago and he told me if I keep the grass cut and put um, uh, curtains up or window treatments up that um, that's all he was interested in and that's what I've done. Okay. Okay. So uh, is there anything else I need to do? Uh, no, ma'am. Are, are you needing some additional time or? Other than the grass being cut, I don't know what the nuisance is. So, so I do want to encourage you after, after this meeting to speak with Mr. Harvin or Harvison or someone from the building department and they can help you get a better understanding of that. Okay. So. Well, yes, I do need additional time. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank Is that you. it? All right. All right. Is there anyone else who wish, wishes to speak in opposition? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, I am Brian Harbison with the Building Department. We started this case in December of 2016. Mm -hmm. There have been some improvements to the exterior of the property. I'll be glad to talk with the owner after the meeting, but if you can see in the pictures, there's still multiple issues on the um, exterior of the house that need to be addressed. We're asking today for a resolution to abate the nuisance. Is the pleasure of the council. I'm going to ask we table it for 30 days. Second. Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to table the resolution for 30 days, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to table for 30 days. Our next public hearing is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 607 South 6th Street in District 5. Paula Aguirre being the last known owner. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, this case involves some commercial property. It's been vacant for um, hmm. a couple of years now, located on 6th Street. Um, we started the process in November of 2016. There have been no improvements. There are no permits to improve, and we're asking for a resolution to abate the nuisance. Okay. What is the pleasure of the council? On recommendation of the building department, I move that we abate the nuisance. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Our next public hearing is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 621 South 6th Street in District 5. Paula Aguirre being the last known owner. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? 
Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, this case is also involving commercial property. It's immediately adjacent to the previous case by the same, same owner. It is on a separate parcel. We started the process in November. Been no improvements. There are no permits to improve, and we're asking for a resolution to abate the nuisance. What is the pleasure of the council? On recommendation of the building department, I recommend that we abate the nuisance. Second. Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our next public hearing is the resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 921 Holly Street in District 5, R.R. Simmons in the state of Alabama being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, we started this case in January of this year. There have been no improvements. There are no permits to improve. We're asking for a resolution to abate the nuisance. What is the pleasure of the council? On recommendation of the building department, I move that we abate the nuisance. Okay. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our final public hearing is a resolution ordering assessing nuisance abatement liens on property at 833 Country, Country Club Drive in District 4. The estate of Irvin L. and Mary W. Neff being the last known owners. This is for removal. So the bill, the bill for the pending nuisance abatement lien on property at 833 Country Club Drive has been paid. Therefore, no action by the council is needed. Item number 15 is a resolution authorizing agreement with ETS. This is for the credit card processing services at Twin Bridges Golf Course. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. New business, is there any new business? Department reports, committees, boards. Good day, everyone. I am Jen Wethington. I'm with the Parks and Recreation Department, and I want to invite everybody out, everybody to um, come out and play with us in the month of July. Month of July is Parks and Recreation Month, and we're asking you to get your play on in all of our parks. We'll be doing a, on the weekends, we'll be coming out to parks, having games for kids and adults to play, and um, also the playgrounds will be open and other facilities. We're starting out in, on July 1st at Hastings Park. July 2nd, so we'll be at Adams Park. July 8th, Carver Community Park. July 9th, Cherry Street Park. July 15th, the White Park. July 16th, the Wildlife, James C. Wildlife Park. July 22nd, Lewis Street. July 23rd, North Gadsden Park. July 29th, Banks Park. And July 30th, Coosa Landing. Uh, we'll be at each park from 2 to 6 p.m. having fun. So we do invite everybody to come out and play. We'll have cornhole, giant Jenga, some um, bubbles for the kids to play with and jump ropes. So we hope to see you out there. Thank you. <coughs> Remarks by the mayor and council. Councilman Matos. No remarks. Okay. Councilman Evans. I'm, I'm not going to make many remarks, but what we have here today 
I can't keep from it. The, uh, I was elected when this part of my government was changed from a three-man to the council forward. That was 30 years ago. So I'm here the same as a, uh, so my eighth term. I never say I'm not going to run again, but if I did, I'd be 90 years old. So <laughs> I doubt that that'll happen, but it, you can't ever tell. I might. <laughs> but to see all these people here, which is the first time in that 30 years, that I've seen this many people for the last, oh, I'd say, <clears throat> four or five meetings come and be involved. It's got to help. And I'm sure that we're going to get together. And with all the <clears throat> 10 little cities that are around and make Edward County the best, if it's not already the best county, the best county in Alabama. Please keep coming. Keep your interest in it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eccles. Councilman Williams. <coughs> I'm going to talk about the job fair. When I left from over there about 10 minutes to 11, we had over 600 prospective job seekers that entered through the doors. We have 100 employers, and every one of them with jobs available. We have over 3,000 jobs available between the 100 employers. So I just want to thank Katrina Herring. She is the assistant manager at the Career <coughs> Center, and she will be taking over as manager on July the 1st. Uh, Mr. Washington, even thank the governor for coming this morning. And I just want to thank everyone from Parks and Rec to Jen. They have done an outstanding job. I like to give credit where credit is due. The mayor's <coughs> office for helping us. Uh, you know, we don't see eye to eye on everything, but on this job, on the different job fairs we've had, he has led me and given me everything I've asked for. So I just want to say thank you. And uh, thank you to the council for supporting the job fair. <coughs> and we hope people uh, will quit talking about it. We don't have jobs. We have plenty of jobs. You just got to get up off your butt and go to work. Say, I hate to say it like that, but that's just the truth. You know, but we're doing this not for ourselves, but to help the community. And we want to get this information out. And it's all type of training programs that Gaston State put on, the Career Center. All you got to do is go to the Career Center and find that whatever type of training you want to do. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Billings. Uh, good evening. Good morning. It's good to see all of the volunteers. Uh, I know these people are not getting paid for these jobs that they're doing. And I've met most of them, and, and most of them are, are pretty good business people. And, and when we can get all of our business people and our city, civic leaders from the county and different cities in this Etowah County area to work together, that is a blessing. And I'm just glad to see everybody that's uh, volunteering to do what we have to do to, to make our county a better place. That's all. Councilman Reed. Sure, in a few words, uh, I know everybody here individually, and I don't think we could ask for a better leadership group in the city of Gaston. I really don't. That's all I have. I, again, just I do want to once again convey convey that sentiment and uh, and uh, thanks to each and every one of them. They they even let Chad show up today, so we appreciate that. Um, I, the the council on aging. I don't want to miss an opportunity to to thank them. Um, and I think I've made that very clear since my very first meeting that uh, the council on aging is one of my favorite nonprofit groups. Uh, now, I'm, I'm going to be like a mother with children. I'll probably say that to most nonprofits. But for sure, the Council on Aging is a group I was very actively raised by my grandmother and my grandparents. So, uh, so there's a special place for the elderly uh, in my heart. And I think they do a wonderful job um, in supporting the community with all of the efforts and the work that they do. So um, we, we don't, you know, the point that you were making was very clear. We don't like to see your numbers go up but we are definitely glad that you're in place uh, when they do, because uh, we all sleep better knowing that our, 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 um, our loved ones are being, being looked after. So, um, so we do appreciate, again, all the hard work and all the effort that you give to the community. So thank you so much for that. 
Just a couple of other announcements before we adjourn. Due to the Independence Day holiday on Tuesday, July 4th, the council will not meet next week. Our regular schedule will resume on Tuesday, July 11th. So again, we will not be meeting on next week, but we will reconvene on uh, Tuesday the 11th. Also due to the, uh, the holiday, Tuesday's garbage route will be collected on Wednesday. Okay, so and please, please make, make note of those things. Um, and, uh, and of course, those, those um, you know, D Dr. Miller and, uh, and, and, and Alex Cosby, who are here representing the school boards, and, uh, and I hope I haven't missed anybody else, but um, we, we definitely appreciate your level of participation. Um, because as, as, we, as we know, uh, educa our educational infrastructure is key. When we look at, um, when we, when we look at Auburn, Opelika, the Auburn Opelika area, when we look at the Huntsville, Madison County area, and some of the other areas that are outpacing us in terms of uh, industrial recruitment, you know, we know that at the centerpiece of their model is education. Mm -hmm. And so we, we know that you guys will, will bring quite a bit to the table in terms of us being able to leverage that and, and, uh, and direct our model towards helping us with economic development. So we appreciate it. Is there anything else before we adjourn? <coughs> if not, I entertain a motion that we adjourn. So